Hello. Well, this week's been big news for the aircraft interiors and the MRO businesses across the Middle East. And we're reporting from the AMMRO 2023 event here in Dubai with the support of Jaramco. Now, the two-day exhibition attracted a cross-section of supply chain companies, innovators, OEMs, airlines, lessors, MROs, and more with its focus on aftermarket technology and expertise. Organizers welcomed more than 150 exhibitors from around the world and 4,000 plus attendees. No wonder delegates were upbeat about the booming market. Consultants Oliver Wyman's 10-year forecast anticipated MRO would be worth around $74 billion globally in 2022. But in the current unsettled environment, the MRO industry is struggling to keep up with demand. One organization getting on top of it is Jaramco, the engineering subsidiary of Dubai's DAE Group, who are announcing expansion plans. Now, Chuck Grieve is down on the show floor now with Jaramco's CEO, Fraser Curry. Fraser, over the last year, you've had a pretty good year by all measure, by all, all measurements. What's next for Jaramco? What's next for Jaramco and for DAE Engineering is the expansion of our footprint and the expansion of our capabilities. That will translate into two new wide body uh, hangars in Queen Alia, Amman. We have chosen that site because that is our, our hub. Um, we're also expanding into wide body paint. So that is giving us the full capability and the scope of growth that's needed to keep up with the market demand from the fleet size increases that are going on, not just in this region, but, but globally. Another of the region's leaders building for the future is Etihad Engineering, who announced an ambitious project to expand the capacity of its half a million square meter facility at Abu Dhabi International Airport, in collaboration with ASI. The Middle East is experiencing a healthy 7 to 8% annual growth in fleet size driven by narrow bodies. And according to the keynote speaker, Brian Coe, that record number of deliveries expected next year is going to be big news for the Middle East. What we're seeing here in the Middle East is an inflection point, actually two inflection points. Uh, and it's, the, it's unique in this region uh, around the world. So on the first hand, we have new generation engines that are taking over and will comprise more of the in-service fleet uh, moving forward. And we see that around the world, uh, that happening, where the new generation engines are taking over. But here in the Middle East, the new generation shop visits will actually occur within the next 10 years. So those are the number of shop visits taking place will exceed those of the legacy engines in the future. The region's operators also benefiting from expansion include FL Technics, which has demonstrated its commitment to the Middle East by opening its second line station in Abu Dhabi. FL doesn't see itself as a UAE maintenance provider, but it has the whole region in its sights. The strategy and the vision of the group is expanding. Uh, there's a number of airlines start after the pandemic, as you self are aware, uh, speeding up their operation and once speeding the operation I like a word I heard from one of the management members he say say the aircraft and the pilot so between the aircraft and pilot we are positioning ourselves the aircraft one of the I would say main pillar in the business where we are look after it and the pilot as well they are driving the industry and driving the business for the airline and we are the main supplier of both here. Yeah. The trend towards greater collaboration was boosted by Saudi Arabia's SAI, which used the show to highlight four new deals, including two 10-year pooling agreements with Lufthansa Technik and Collins Aerospace. SAI also announced an MOU with the Ramco subsidiary, Lubaref, for localization of lubricants, and with GE for its digital asset record software. Lufthansa Technik also signed a major deal with Emirates for maintenance on landing gear for the Dubai Airlines A380s. Emirates was also all the talk across the hall in the Aircraft Interior Show where innovation and investment was at the forefront. 
Special guest Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, the chairman and CEO of Emirates Airline and Group, Fly Dubai, as well as the airport's company and the Civil Aviation Authority, toured the show. Well, his airline Emirates had led by example with its $2 billion fleet refit of 120 A380s and 777s, flagged as the biggest single program anywhere ever. Plans include the adoption of premium economy cabins for the first time. Other carriers are rethinking cabins to accommodate the shift towards using narrow body aircraft on longer sectors. And that's a bit that's going to become even more urgent as even more longer range narrow bodies like the A321XLR enter service in the next few years. These adjustments are not just about the seats. It calls for new thinking about galleys, toilets, leathers, everything. Ideas are coming from everywhere. France had a national presence with 20 companies exhibiting under the tricolour alongside the likes of Airbus, Satair, was Safran, which is supplying the new seats for the Emirates A380 Total Fleet Refit program. Cabin digitalization also got a new twist from newcomer AirQ. This first time exhibitor is a joint venture between Lufthansa Technique and LG Electronics, the Korean consumer electronics giant. And they're aiming to transform cabins with a new kind of digital ecosystem that will work for both airlines and their customers. And, um, this goes towards how do we create and deliver revenues in this guide. We need to open up the cabin basically and make it available also with potential app partners. It can also be uh, partners of the airlines to integrate new content and make it available to the passenger and maybe bringing a bit the experience from the ground closer to, um, to the air. So it's great to see so much positive thinking. The message from the Go Live Theatre, where industry leaders and experts chewed over the current and perennial challenges, was that flexibility by both airlines and MROs and improved communication by both sides will solve some of those capacity challenges. Well, it's been great to see this aviation services event back in action. And thanks again to Jaramco for helping to bring this film to you. Now. It's time to get the events collaboration message on board. Enough listening, it's time to get talking. Goodbye.